Gurudev, do you as a human being have ever ever have a bad day? <laughs> hmm? 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 I don't think so. Every day, every second, every minute, every hour, every body is good to me. There's nothing bad. They become bad if you are bad. You put yourself in the hands of God, God will never send a bad day to you. Sometimes it may appear to be bad, but there is something good behind that. Haven't you heard the proverb, adversities are blessings in disguise. They may look bad, You are a young child, you don't know what operation means. The parents take you to the hospital for a surgery. It's a bad day for you. Hmm? But later on you realize that if I hadn't had the bad day, I wouldn't be living today. So, the so-called bell day also has something good behind it. So, accept it as God-given. As one of the saints says, Nandre saivai, pere saivai, nano idatka nayagami. He may bring good or bad things for me. Am I responsible for it? I know you are doing it for my own good. If I don't deserve it, you won't give it to me. So put your faith in God. All the days are good days. Another great saint sings, huh? Nyayuri Zingal Savai, Sani Bam Birundu Mudane, Ayave Nalla Nalla, Avenalla Nalla, Diyar Avar Kamigave. He says, All the days are good if you are a good disciple of God, good devotee of God. So if you are afraid of bad days, become a good disciple soon. good devotee, then no bad will come to you. How do you make a major irrevocable life decision when you get no guidance from your heart and you have to decide soon? Hmm. No guidance from your heart. You have to decide soon. That's why in your life you should have a good guide. When a situation comes, at that moment you cannot go and search for a good guide. Hmm? 
because you cannot make your decision. Somebody has to make it for you. So always better to have that somebody who can make good decision for you. Maybe your own father, mother, relatives, friends, guardian angels, <coughs> guru. You should always have somebody to resort to when you cannot make decisions. It will be helpful. Don't wait for, oh, when that day comes, I'll find somebody. Can a person lose their enlightenment or salvation? Hmm? What a good question is that. Hmm? Can a person lose their enlightenment? Once you are enlightened, you will never lose it. But you think something is enlightened, you are enlightened, but you are not, you may lose it. Because once enlightenment comes, it becomes permanent. So, temporary enlightenment, the so-called imitation enlightenment, it comes and goes. So, make it permanent, make it permanent. Yes, yeah, sometimes you are get you get enlightened over many things, but they are temporary, relative to other things, <coughs> but the real enlightenment is of knowing yourself. You recognize your own true nature. Recognize yourself as the image of God, as the pure Self. Once that Self-realization comes, you are a different person. Even though you move around and you look like ordinary same person, you may even do things like ordinary person, but you are totally different. You are not even doing it then. Your enlightened self guides the body and mind. And it won't allow the body and mind to do wrong things. You still are in the knowledge of what your body and mind are doing. You stand behind your physical 
and mental activities. You are not even associated with that. That's what you call liberation. You liberate yourself from the association of body and mind. And allow the body and mind to do their part of work. That way, for others, sometimes they may say you are doing certain things. But you are not doing. So in that sense, you are doing and not doing. The doing you is the body-mind. The not doing you is the pure self. That's what the scriptures say. See, see the seer. You are seeing... But behind the seeing, there's the seer. Know the knower. Hear the hearer. You are sleeping without sleeping. Sleepless sleep. Jagra Sushupti. One of the famous saint, I think Thai Manavar, says, Tungamal tungi sukam berubade kalam. He says, when can I sleep without sleeping? <coughs> Bhagavad Gita talks about that. Karman ya karma pasyet. While doing karma, recognize the karma, the non-doer. That is enlightenment, self-realization. And that comes to you to never slip from that. You are always the same. Everybody should aim for that liberation, salvation, moksha. It's all in our hands. We can bind ourselves, we can liberate ourselves. Whatever you want, you will have it. Mana eva manishyanam karnam bandha moksha yoho says as your mind so you are. If the mind thinks you are bound, you are bound. If your mind thinks you are liberated, you are liberated. But for the mind to think rightly, you should have a clean mind. Unclean mind cannot even think these clean thoughts. That's why first clean up the mind and let the clean mind think of the self. That is the reason all these practices in the name of spirituality, they are all based on cleaning the mind, cleaning the mind, freeing the mind from disturbing thoughts. Yogaha chitta vritti nirodaha There are a lot of waves in the chitta, or the mind. 
lest we all subside it. The mind should be a clean sheet of water without any wave. Then in that clean mind you can realize your own true nature. That's why even yoga practices begin with yama niyama. Yama niyama are there to clean up the mind. Clean up the mind. When Moses went to the mountains, what did God him give him? Tools to clean up the mind. Ten Commandments. He didn't ask you to stand up on the head or do pranayama or meditate. No. All that comes afterwards. The first two steps of Patanjali Yoga Sutra was given by God to Moses. Yama, five commandments. Niyama, five commandments. God gave us ten commandments in two tablets. Yama, Niyama. One tablet is called Yama, another tablet Niyama. And what are we doing with those tablets? Put it in the altar. Wave incense, worship. When the doctor gives a remedy to you, you say, oh, my sweet doctor, a great doctor, my good friend, doctor gave me the pills. What should I do? Put it at the altar. Wave incense. Is that why the doctor gave you the pills? The tablets? Hmm? Why did he give the tablets? To swallow. God gave the tablets to Moses. He swallowed a little. He gave the others (coughs) to swallow. What are we doing with the tablets? Build a nice altar. Hmm? Hmm? That's what. Every spiritual, spiritually interested person should begin with the two tablets. Ten commandments, yama, niyama, whatever way you call it, it's all the same. Without that, all your practices will not bring good results. It's a wastage of time. So make sure that your mind is clean, calm, always thinking of good thoughts, loving thoughts, compassionate thoughts. then you are ready to get enlightenment. Thank you. God bless.